Hey guys, with Season of Discovery just around the corner, we're about to experience a ton of exciting new changes to classic World of Warcraft, especially when it comes to playing your class. If you're like me, you still haven't settled on what class to pick, and knowing what new abilities await in Season of Discovery might just be the deciding factor in choosing your main. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at all the runes available to each class in Phase 1, and I'll be highlighting certain abilities that I find notable, interesting, or just something you should consider before picking your class. First, a brief summary of how the rune engraving system will work. As I mentioned, the system revolves around runes that will be unlockable through discoveries, mysterious new quests, open world events, or other secrets yet to be revealed. While Blizzard is keeping the exact unlock methods a secret in the spirit of discovery, what we do know is that in phase 1 there are three types of runes that will be discoverable for each class. These are chest runes, leg runes, and glove runes. Once they're unlocked, you can engrave one of each type onto your respective armor slots, allowing you to run up to three new abilities simultaneously. In future phases, we're likely going to get an expansion of rune types to include, for example, head runes, shoulder runes, waist runes, etc. Most of the runes added to Season of Discovery are kind of a greatest hits of iconic class abilities that were added in various expansions over the years, and some are totally new. So if you're a longtime WoW player, a lot of these spells will sound familiar, but just because the name sounds familiar doesn't mean it'll work the same way, so pay close attention to the spell descriptions and don't make any assumptions. Oh, and before we jump into it, this list of abilities was compiled from the runes available at BlizzCon on the Season of Discovery gameplay preview. At the time of this video, these are the most up-to-date versions of those runes. This list has been updated to include all the datamine tuning changes published by WoWhead on November 21st. Since Season of Discovery is not live yet, everything on this list is still technically subject to change, but right now we're less than one week away, so these are most likely the finalized runes we'll be getting on November 30th. I've linked my sources in the description for future reference, and with that disclaimer out of the way, let's take a look at these abilities. First up is Mages. Starting with the chest runes, we have Burnout, increases your spell critical strike chance with all spells by 15%, but your non-periodic spell critical strikes now have an additional mana cost of 1% of your base mana. Fingers of Frost, gives your chill effects a 15% chance to grant you the Fingers of Frost effect, which treats your next two spells cast as if the target were frozen, lasts for 15 seconds. Regeneration. Heals the target over 3 seconds and applies Temporal Beacon for 30 seconds. After casting this spell, you will suffer from Tangled Causality for 5 minutes, reducing your Fire and Frost spell damage done by 50% and preventing the use of Ice Block. Temporal Beacon records the subject's space-time position. 40% of all arcane damage done by the caster will be converted to Chronomantic Healing and divided among the caster's current Temporal Beacon targets. Next, we have the Leg Runes. Icy Veins. Hastens your spellcasting, increasing spellcasting speed by 20%, and reduces the pushback suffered from damaging attacks while casting by 100%. Lasts 20 seconds. Arcane Surge. Unleash all of your remaining mana in a surge of energy focused at the target, dealing arcane damage, increased by up to 300% based on your mana remaining. Afterward, your normal mana regeneration is activated and increased by 300% for 8 seconds. Mass Regeneration. Heals all of target player's party members within 15 yards of the target player over 3 seconds and applies Temporal Beacon to each target for 15 seconds. After casting this spell, you will suffer from Tangled Causality for 5 minutes, reducing your Fire and Frost spell damage done by 50% and preventing the use of Ice Block. This will also grant Temporal Beacon, which records the subject's time-space position. 40% of all arcane damage done by the caster will be converted to Chronomantic Healing and divided among the caster's current Temporal Beacon targets. Living Flame Summons a Spellfire Flame that moves toward the target, leaving a trail of Spellfire. This trail deals Spellfire damage every second to nearby enemies, and it lasts for 20 seconds. And then we have the Glove Runes. Rewind Time, your current target with Temporal Beacon, instantly heals all damage taken over the last 5 seconds, ineffective on targets that did not have Temporal Beacon 5 seconds ago. Living Bomb, the target becomes a living bomb, taking fire damage over 12 seconds. After 12 seconds, or when the spell is dispelled, the target explodes, dealing fire damage to all enemies within 10 yards. 
Arcane Blast. Blast the target with energy, dealing arcane damage. Each time you cast an arcane blast, the damage and healing of all other arcane spells is increased by 15%, and mana cost of arcane blast is increased by 175%. Effect stacks up to 4 times and lasts 6 seconds or until any other arcane damage or healing spell is cast. Ice Lance. Deals frost damage to an enemy target, causes triple damage against frozen targets. The biggest new feature to mages here is that regeneration, mass regeneration, and rewind time allow the mage to fill the role of a healer. The gist of it is that you will apply temporal beacons to your friends and pump arcane damage into enemies, causing your friends to heal. This concept of healing by doing damage to enemies is the same concept as the disciplined priest in Retail WoW, and I'm interested to see how these mage healers perform overall. The potential's definitely there. Up next is the Druid. Let's get into it, starting with the chest runes. Living Seed. When you critically heal your target with any healing spell, you plant a living seed on the target for 30% of the amount healed. The living seed will bloom when the target is next attacked, lasts 15 seconds. Wild Strikes. When you are in cat form, bear form, or dire bear form, party members within 20 yards gain increased combat ferocity. Each melee hit has a 20% chance of granting the attacker an extra attack with 20% additional attack power. This has no effect if the party member is already benefiting from Wind Fury Totem. Fury of Storm Rage reduces the mana cost of Wrath by 100%, and each time you deal damage with Wrath, you have a 12% chance for your next cast of Healing Touch within 15 seconds to be instant. Survival of the Fittest reduces the chance you'll be critically hit by melee attacks by 6% and reduces all damage taken by 10%. Damage taken reduced by an additional 10% while in bear form or dire bear form. And for the leg runes, we have Star Surge. Launch surging stellar energies that causes arcane damage. Star Surge benefits from and triggers most talents and effects that trigger or benefit from Wrath or Starfire. Life Bloom. Heals the target over 7 seconds. When Life Bloom completes its duration or is dispelled, the target instantly heals and the druid regains half the cost of the spell. This effect can stack up to three times on the same target. Skull Bash. Charge to a target within 13 yards and bash the target's skull, interrupting spellcasting and preventing any spell in that school from being cast for two seconds. Shares a cooldown with Feral Charge. Savage Roar. Finishing move that increases physical damage done by 30% while in cat form. Lasts longer per combo point. And for the glove runes, we have Sunfire. Burns the enemy for nature damage, and then an additional amount of nature damage over 12 seconds. Lacerate. Lacerates the enemy target, making them bleed for damage over 15 seconds, plus 20% weapon damage per existing application of Lacerate on the target. Causes a high amount of threat. This effect stacks up to 5 times on the same target. Wild Growth. Heals all of the target player's party members within 40 yards of target player for a certain amount over 7 seconds. The amount healed is applied quickly at first and slows down as wild growth reaches its full duration. Mangle. Gain the Mangle Bear ability and replace your claw ability with Mangle Cat. For Bear, mangle the target for 160% normal damage and cause the target to take 30% additional damage from bleed effects and shred for 1 minute. This ability benefits from and triggers all effects associated with Claw and Maul. For Cat, mangle the target for 300% normal damage and cause the target to take 30% additional damage from bleed effects and shred for 1 minute. Awards 1 combo point. This ability benefits from and triggers all effects associated with Claw and Maul. So for Druid, most of these abilities just kind of round out all the specs to bring them up to a certain viability standard. Fury of Stormrage will help balance Druids with their mana problems, but I think the most notable rune for Druids is going to be Wild Strikes. This ability is meant to even the faction playing field by essentially giving Feral Druids Wind Fury Totem. This will make Feral a much desired addition to any group with melee damage dealers. Up next we have Priest. Let's start with the chess runes. Void Plague afflicts the target with a disease that causes shadow damage over 18 seconds. Serendipity. Healing with Flash Heal reduces the cast time of your next Lesser Heal, Heal, Greater Heal, or Prayer of Healing by 20% for 20 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. 
Strength of Soul. Lesser heal, heal, greater heal, and flash heal will reduce the remaining duration of weakened soul on targets they heal by 4 seconds. In addition, targets with your power word shield will gain rage from taking damage despite the damage being absorbed, and Righteous Fury will trigger from damage absorbed by your power word shield as if it were a heal. Twisted Faith. Mind Flay and Mind Blast deal 20% increased damage to targets affected with your shadow word pain. Next, we have the Leg Runes. Power Word Barrier. Summons a Holy Barrier to protect all party members at the target location for 10 seconds, reducing all damage taken by 25% and preventing damage from delaying spell casting. Shared Pain. Your Shadow Word Pain now also afflicts up to two additional nearby targets within 15 yards. Homunculi. Break off splinters of your soul to animate three miniature copies of yourself that attempt to attack your current target with a mace, sword, and axe, reducing the attack speed, attack power, and armor respectively of any target they hit. Prayer of Mending. Places a spell on the target that heals them the next time they take damage or receive healing. When the heal occurs, Prayer of Mending jumps to a party or raid member within 20 yards, jumps up to 5 times, and lasts 30 seconds after each jump. This spell can only be placed on one target at a time. And for the glove runes, we have Penance. Launches a volley of holy light at the target, causing damage to an enemy or healing an ally instantly and every one second for two seconds. Mind Seer. Causes an explosion of shadow magic around the enemy target, causing shadow damage every second for five seconds to all enemies within 10 yards around the target. Circle of Healing. Heals all of target player's party members within 40 yards of target player. Shadow Word Death, a word of dark binding that inflicts shadow damage to the target. If the target is not killed by Shadow Word Death, the caster takes damage equal to the damage inflicted upon the target. Overall, these runes sound like a lot of fun to play with and just further the priest's already huge healing potential. It's nice to see Strength of Soul will allow for smoother tanking while Power Word Shield is active. Shadow isn't looking too shabby either with Mind Seer, but I think the standout rune here for priests is Homunculi. Being able to potentially reduce the attack speed, attack power, and armor of a boss, especially if it stacks with other debuffs, is huge, and it's going to be highly desired in any group. Up next is Warlock. Let's start with the chest runes. Lake of Fire. Rain of Fire also leaves a lake of fire on the ground that increases all fire damage you deal and your demon pet deals to affected enemies by 40% for 15 seconds. Master Channeler. Your drain life is no longer channeled, lasts 15 seconds with a 15 second cooldown, costs 100% more mana, and heals you for 50% more each time it deals damage. Soul Siphon. Increases the amount drained by your Drain Life and Drain Soul spells by an additional 6% for each of your Warlock Shadow effects affecting the target, up to a maximum of 18% additional effect. Demonic Tactics. Increases the melee and spell critical strike chance of you and your pet by 10%. Next we have the Leg Runes. Everlasting Affliction. Drain Life, Drain Soul, Shadow Bolt, Shadow Cleave, Searing Pain, Incinerate, and Haunt refresh the duration of your corruption on the target back to its maximum duration. Incinerate. Burn your enemy for damage and increase all fire damage you deal by 25% for the next 15 seconds. Demonic Grace. Surge with Fell Energy, increasing your pet's and your own dodge chance by 30% and your chance to critically strike with all attacks by 30%. Lasts 6 seconds. Demonic Pact. Your pet's critical strikes apply the Demonic Pact effect to your party members for 45 seconds. Demonic Pact increases your spell damage and healing by 10% of your spell damage or level divided by 2, whichever is higher. Does not work on subjugated demons. And for the glove runes, we have Metamorphosis. Transform into a demon, increasing armor by 500%, reducing the chance you will be critically hit by 6%, Increasing your threat by 50%, increasing mana gain from life tap by 100%, transforming the functionality of some of your abilities and granting some new abilities. Searing Pain is now instant. Shadow Bolt becomes Shadow Cleave, a shadow melee attack that hits up to three nearby enemies but has a six second cooldown. Curse of Recklessness now taunts your target to attack you for three seconds but gains a 10 second cooldown and range is reduced to melee. 
Demon Charge, charge an enemy and stun it for one second, cannot be used in combat. Demonic Howl forces all enemies to focus attacks on you for six seconds. Shadow Bolt Volley. Your Shadow Bolt now strikes up to five targets within a chain distance of 10 yards, but for 20% reduced damage. Chaos Bolt. Sends a bolt of chaotic fire at the enemy, dealing fire damage. Chaos Bolt always hits, cannot be resisted, and its knowledge causes your fire spells to pierce through absorption effects. Haunt. Unleash a ghostly soul on an enemy, dealing damage and increasing all shadow damage over time you deal to that target by 20%. When the haunt ends or is dispelled, you will be healed for all the damage it dealt to your target. Okay, it's no surprise that Metamorphosis is the most notable rune here. With it, Warlock tanks are now a thing. It basically works just like bear form for Druid, and your normal caster Warlock spells are turned into tank spells instead. But don't let Metamorphosis overshadow some of the other spells. Warlocks are going to be having some amazing AoE damage, and of course, we can't forget about Chaos Bolt. It's going to be hard to pick what build to run on Warlock because all of these runes look pretty damn good. Up next is Warrior. Starting with the chest runes, we have Flagellation, gain a 25% bonus to physical damage done for 12 seconds after activating Blood Rage or Berserker Rage. Blood Frenzy, each time you deal bleed damage you gain 3 Rage. Raging Blow, a ferocious strike that deals 100% weapon damage but can only be used while in Rage, Berserker Rage, or Blood Rage is active. And Warbringer, your charge, intercept, and intervene abilities are now usable while in combat and in any stance, and will all remove movement and pairing effects while activated. Next we have the Leg Runes. Furious Thunder. Thunderclap now increases the time between attacks by an additional 6%, can be used in any stance, and deals 50% increased threat. Frenzied Assault. While wielding two-handed weapons, your attack speed is increased by 20%. And Consumed by Rage, enrages you and grants you a 20% melee damage bonus for 12 seconds, or up to a maximum of 12 swings after you exceed 80 Rage. And for the Glove Runes, we have Victory Rush, instantly attack the target, causing damage and healing you for 10% of your maximum health, only usable within 20 seconds after you kill an enemy that yields experience or honor. Endless Rage, you generate 25% more Rage from all damage you deal. Devastate. Sunder Armor also deals 100% weapon damage, increased by 10% per application of Sunder Armor already on the target. Single-Minded Fury. While dual wielding, your physical damage and movement speed are increased by 10%. Quick Strike. A reckless instant melee attack with your two-handed weapon, dealing physical damage. This ability benefits from and triggers all the effects associated with Heroic Strike. Warrior mains going into Season of Discovery, have no fear. This array of new abilities has me thinking warriors are still going to be an S tier class. I'm having trouble even deciding which rune stands out to me because I can see a few different combos that are going to be great. Warrior will still be strong at level 25 and will only continue to improve as the level cap increases. I think all the reasons to pick warrior in regular classics still apply in Season of Discovery. Up next we'll look at Hunter. Let's start with the chest runes. Aspect of the Lion. The hunter takes on the aspects of a lion, increasing total stats by 10% for all nearby allies, and increasing total stats for the hunter by an additional 10%. Only one aspect can be active at a time. Master Marksman. Increases your critical strike chance by 5% and reduces the mana cost of your shot abilities by 25%. Lone Wolf. You deal 15% increased damage with all attacks while you do not have an active pet. Cobra Strikes. Your critical hits with shot abilities causes your pet's next two special attacks to critically hit. Next we'll look at the leg runes. Kill Command. Give the command to kill, increasing your pet's damage done from special attacks by 60% for 30 seconds. Each special attack done by the pet reduces your damage bonus by 20%. Sniper Training. Your shot abilities gain 10% increased critical strike chance while you have not moved the last 6 seconds. Serpent Spread. Targets hit by your multi-shot are also afflicted by your Serpent Sting for 6 seconds. Flanking Strike. You and your pet deal simultaneous instant 100% melee damage. Afterwards, your Mongoose Bite and Raptor Strike deal 10% increased damage for 10 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. 
Raptor Strike has a 20% chance to reset the cooldown on Flanking Strike. And for the glove runes, we have Beast Mastery. Your pet's damage and health are increased by 30% and its focus regeneration by 80%. In addition, your pet's growl now also taunts the target to attack it for 3 seconds. Chimera Shot. You deal 125% weapon damage, refreshing the current sting on your target and triggering an effect. For Serpent Sting, instantly deals 40% of the damage done by your Serpent Sting. For Viper Sting, instantly restores mana to you equal to 60% of the total amount drained by your Viper Sting. And Scorpid Sting attempts to disarm the target for 10 seconds. This effect cannot occur more than once per minute. Explosive Shot. You fire an explosive charge into the enemy target, dealing fire damage. The charge will blast the target every second for an additional 2 seconds. Cooldown shared with Arcane Shot. Carve. A sweeping attack that strikes all enemies in front of you for 50% weapon damage. There are some interesting ones here, but the biggest thing to note for me is the potential for a solid melee hunter build, possibly a combination of Lone Wolf and Flanking Strike. Also, using Chimera Shot with Scorpid Sting to disarm a target for 10 seconds sounds really OP against melee enemies, especially in PvP. I can't wait to see it. I think Hunters are going to be one of the top damage dealers in Phase 1 at least, and I'm expecting this to be a very popular class overall in Season of Discovery. Up next is Rogue. Starting with the chest runes, Deadly Brew. When you inflict any other poison on a target, you also inflict Deadly Poison. Just a Flesh Wound. You take 20% reduced physical damage while Blade Dance is active. Additionally, you have 6% reduced chance to be critically hit by melee attacks. The threat generated by all your actions is massively increased, and your feint ability is replaced with Tease, which taunts the target to attack you. Tease taunts the target to attack you, but has no effect if the target is already attacking you. Quick Draw Draw your ranged weapon and fire a quick shot at an enemy, causing normal ranged weapon damage and reducing the target's movement speed by 50% for 6 seconds. Awards 1 combo point. Quick Draw benefits from all talents and effects that trigger from or modify Sinister Strike. Slaughter from the Shadows. Reduces the energy cost of your backstab and ambush abilities by 20%. Does not apply to abilities learned from other runes. Next, we have the Leg Runes. Between the eyes, ranged finishing move that causes damage per combo point increased by attack power and stuns the target. Cooldown shared with Kidney Shot. Blade Dance. Finishing move that increases your parry chance, lasts longer and grants more parry chance per combo point. Invenom. Finishing move that deals instant poison damage based on your deadly poison doses on the target. Following the Envenom attack, you have a 75% increased frequency of applying instant poison for 1 second, plus an additional 1 second per combo point. One dose is activated per combo point. And for the Glove Runes, Mutilate instantly attacks with both weapons for 100% weapon damage, plus additional damage with each weapon. Damage is increased by 20% against poison targets, and it awards 2 combo points. Shadow Strike Teleport behind your target and strike, causing 150% weapon damage to the target. Must be stealthed. Awards 1 combo point. Saber Slash. Viciously slash an enemy for 130% weapon damage and cause the target to bleed for damage every 2 seconds for 12 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. Awards 1 combo point. Saber Slash benefits from all talents and effects that trigger or modify Sinister Strike. Shiv. Instantly attack with your offhand weapon, with a 100% chance to apply the poison from your offhand weapon to the target. Slower weapons require more energy, awards 1 combo point. Main Gotch Instantly strike with your offhand weapon for normal offhand weapon damage and increase your chance to parry by 10% for 10 seconds, awards 1 combo point. Main Gotch benefits from all talents and effects that trigger from or modify Sinister Strike. With Rogue tanking, there is a potential to gain over 100% avoidance by the time we get to level 60, so I'm going to expect that to get nerfed somewhere along the way. But avoidance tanking is interesting for sure. The idea of a Rogue tank seemed just as weird as a Mage healer to me when it was announced, but after seeing the Just a Flesh Wound rune, I get what they're going for here. And if tanking isn't for you, there's still a ton of interesting intricacies to play around with on the other runic abilities. Up next is Shaman. Let's start with the chess runes. 
Dual Wield Specialization. Increases your chance to hit with both spells and melee attacks by 5% while dual wielding, and your Storm Strike ability now hits with both weapons while dual wielding. Shield Mastery. Each time you block, you regenerate mana equal to 8% of your maximum mana, and you gain armor equal to 30% of your shield's armor value, stacking up to 5 times. You also always gain 10% increased chance to block and 15% increased block value. Overload. Gives your Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, Chain Heal, Healing Wave, and Lava Burst spells a 33% chance to cast a second, similar spell on the same target at no additional cost that causes half damage or healing and no threat. Healing Rain. Selects the area 15 yards around the target player and heals all of the target player's party members within that area every second. Next we have the Leg Runes. Ancestral Guidance. For the next 10 seconds, 25% of your damage is converted to healing on up to 3 nearby party members, and 100% of your healing is converted to damage on your most recent Flame Shock target. Earth Shield. Protects the target with an earthen shield, reducing casting or channeling time lost when damaged by 30%, and causing attacks to heal the shielded target for 100. This effect can only occur once every few seconds. Three charges, lasts 10 minutes, Earth Shield can only be placed on one target at a time, and only one elemental shield can be active on a target at a time. Way of Earth. While Rockbiter weapon is active on your main hand weapon, you deal 50% increased threat, gain 30% increased health, take 10% reduced damage, gain 6% reduced chance to be critically hit by melee attacks, and Earth Shock taunts targets to attack you and has a separate cooldown from other shock spells, but has its range reduced to melee range. Shamanistic Rage. Reduces all damage you take by 20% and you regenerate mana every second for 15 seconds. Mana regenerated per second is equal to 15% of your attack power, 10% of your spell power, or 6% of your healing power, whichever value is greatest. Your party members within 40 yards will also receive 10% of the mana you receive this way. And for the glove runes, we have Water Shield. The caster is surrounded by 3 globes of water, granting 1% of your maximum mana per 5 seconds. When a spell, melee, or range attack hits the caster, 4% of maximum mana is restored to the caster. This expends one water globe. Only one globe will activate every few seconds, lasts 10 minutes, only one elemental shield can be active on the shaman at any one time. Lava Burst. You hurl molten lava at the target, dealing fire damage. If your flame shock is on the target, Lava Burst will deal a critical strike. Lava Lash. You charge your offhand weapon with lava, instantly dealing 100% offhand weapon damage. Damage is increased by 20% if your offhand weapon is enchanted with Flame Tongue. Molten Blast. Blast up to X number of enemies in a cone in front of you for fire damage. <laughs> this ability generates a high amount of threat. Flame Shock periodic damage has a 10% chance to reset the cooldown of Molten Blast. Now, Shamans are probably the class I'm least familiar with, but obviously this is another class that's becoming a viable tank in Season of Discovery. Unlike Rogues and Warlocks though, Shamans were originally intended to be able to tank in vanilla, it just didn't really work out for them. With the Way of Earth rune, Shamans can finally fulfill their destiny as Wardens of the Earth, just don't forget to apply Rockbiter to your weapon. And finally we have Paladin. Starting with the chest runes, we have Seal of Martyrdom. Fills you with Holy Spirit for 30 seconds, causing each of your melee attacks to deal 30% weapon damage to your target, but you lose health equal to 10% of the damage inflicted. While this seal is active, your party members within 40 yards each gain mana equal to 10% of damage you take from this seal. Unleashing the seal's energy will judge an enemy, instantly causing 70% weapon damage at the cost of health equal to 10% of the damage inflicted. Divine Storm, an instant weapon attack that causes 110% of weapon damage to up to 4 enemies within 8 yards. The Divine Storm heals up to 3 party or raid members, totaling 25% of the damage caused. Horn of Lordaeron, the Paladin blows the Horn of Lordaeron, which increases total strength and agility of all party members within 30 yards by 6, lasts 2 minutes, exclusive with Blessing of Might. 
Aegis, increases your block value by 30%, and damaging melee and range attacks against you have a 10% chance to increase your chance to block by 30%. Last 10 seconds or 5 blocks. Effect not cumulative with redoubt. Next we have the leg runes. Divine Sacrifice. 30% of all damage taken by party members within 30 yards is redirected to the paladin for 10 seconds. Damage which reduces the paladin below 20% health will break the effect and grant the paladin 10% increased damage and healing done for 10 seconds. Divine Sacrifice cannot be used while you are under the effects of Blessing of Protection, Divine Shield, or Divine Protection, and prevents you from being targeted by those abilities while it is active. Inspiration Exemplar. Your inspiring presence periodically dispels fear and sleep effects on nearby party members. Avenger's Shield. Hurls a holy shield at the enemy, dealing holy damage, dazing them, and then jumping to additional nearby enemies. Affects three total targets and lasts 10 seconds. Exorcist. Exorcism can now be cast on any target and has 100% increased critical strike chance against undead and demons. Rebuke. Interrupts spellcasting and prevents any spell in that school from being cast for two seconds. And finally, for the glove runes, we have Beacon of Light. The target becomes a beacon of light to all members of your party or raid within a 40-yard radius. Any heals you cast on party or raid members will also heal the beacon for 100% of the amount healed. Only one target can be the beacon of light at a time, and it lasts for one minute. Crusader Strike. An instant strike that causes 75% weapon damage and regenerates 2% of your maximum mana. And Hand of Reckoning. Taunts the target to attack you, but has no effect if the target is already attacking you. While you know this ability, the threat bonus from Righteous Fury is increased by 80%, and Righteous Fury causes you to gain mana when healed by others equal to 25% of the amount healed. Additionally, while Righteous Fury is active, damage which takes you below 35% health is reduced by 20%. Righteous Fury will remain active until cancelled. Finally, in Season of Discovery, the Paladin will become the holy warrior it's always wanted to be. In fact, I think Paladin is going to be a contender for the top class in tanking DPS and heals. If you've played Pally in the past and had any complaint that all you do is hand out blessings and auto attack, well good news for you, you'll have way more to do in Season of Discovery. And that's all the runes available in Phase 1 of Season of Discovery. I'm no theory crafter, but it'll be interesting to see what new optimized class builds will come out at the level 25 endgame. Hopefully their internal testing was enough to get a somewhat balanced class tuning. It does feel like these abilities are more balanced than they were before the datamined updates, but I have a feeling the first few weeks of the season will bring further nerfs and tuning, so rather than focusing on which class has the most OP runes, I'd recommend choosing a class that sounds the most fun to play. And hey, the initial phase is capped at level 25, so if you're split between picking two different classes, why not level 2 or even 3 or 4 characters and give everything a try? Well guys, that just about does it for this video. What class do you plan on playing first in Season of Discovery? Did any of these runes change your mind about what you wanted to play? For me, I'm feeling like Druid or Warlock might be my first character, but really they all sound fun to play. Subscribe for more Season of Discovery content, and if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like or a comment, and until next time guys, I'll see ya.